Okay guys, I've got to grind up a, uh, a cutting tool, an Acme cutting tool for the internal thread we've got to um, produce. I've pre-ground this by hand just on my, uh, or offhand uh, on my grinder out in the, uh, in the other shed. Um, that's pretty much down to sizes that I need. To do my final checkups, once again we use the little Wixley gauge. We pop that on there. And we're looking for 14.5, which is where we're at. And I'll just give that a very, very light lick. I always bring the nose slightly undersized so I can go and offhand grind that again to bring that back to my uh, back to my gauge width. And we're running 4 TPI on this one here, so I'll match the gauge width to that. Alright. We'll get that nipped up and uh, we'll give each side a lick and uh, we'll cut this off the length and get started. Let me do the same again for the other side. Oh guys, so that's our, our threading tool all ground up. Um, what I've done is uh, I've relieved the front face there so that uh, it doesn't rub on the, uh, the root of the, um, the thread as I'm cutting it. I also relieve the leading edge back so that it's not going to rub on the side of the thread as we're cutting it as well. And uh, I've given it a good hone. So I'll cut that off to a, a length. We'll get that set up in the uh, in the bar, and uh, we'll get uh, we'll get organised for thread cutting. One thing I'm going to do before I do start uh, cutting this thread or setting it up is I'm going to machine one thread off the back of the uh, the screw to actually get what that uh, root diameter is. Um, I've done all the numbers on this, but because this is a production type thing and uh, things tend to wear when they're doing production things, sometimes those tolerances can go out. Um, according to the charts, it's uh, it's three quarter uh, is what the, uh, what the root diameter should be, um, depending on the class as well, but averaging at about three quarters of an inch. But I'll just take off one thread, we'll measure what the root diameter is, and then we can uh, we can bore our nut out uh, with a little bit of clearance on top of that. All right, guys, I'm just taking a little lick off the OD here just to tidy it up. Uh, makes it look like we've been here too. All right, we'll give it a rub with some emery on that. I'll give it a little bit of a face off as well, tidy that up. Got a few little dings and dacks in it, but I'm not going to worry about those. All right, we'll get that uh, cleaned up, then we'll flip him over. I'll take that uh, one thread off the back, and we'll have a look and see what that root diameter is. All right, guys, I've given this uh, a clean up with one thread just to measure that root diameter. That's measuring up at 19.8. So that's quite a bit over even the um, the uh, highest class, or I should say the lowest class, which I think works out around about 19, just a tad over 19.5. All right, we'll uh, work on 19.8. We'll give it a little bit of clearance on that um, on that ball we've got to put into the nut. All right, we'll get the four jaw set up into here now, and uh, we'll get that nut on the go. All right, so I've quickly clocked this up in the four jaw, and uh, we've got that pretty spot on. And you can see the importance of doing that true bore off the uh, x and y coordinates on the milling machine to get that absolutely spot on, just a matter of clocking it up. And then we'll uh, continue the drill through because we didn't finish that off in the mill last time. And then we'll bore it out to size uh, with a little bit of clearance um, for that root diameter on the uh, on the thread. All right, guys, we'll, uh, we'll get into it. All right, guys, once again, I'm using the uh, the collet chuck and the, uh, and the towel stock. Obviously, the reason being, as before, I don't have any key chucks, they're curless chucks, and if they do tend to grab, and it will probably grab on the way out, as it does exit the hole, um, they jam up very, very tight in those uh, in those jaws on those curlers chucks. So that's why I've got the uh, the collet set in there.
All right, guys, we're set up for boring. Everything's clocked up nice and true. Um, the root diameter on the uh, on the um, screw ended up being at uh, measuring up at, as we said, 19.8. I'm going to bore out to 19.9. We can always lift it out a bit more if we have to, and we'll make that our starting point uh, for the root diameter, and then uh, or the minor diameter, and we'll start our uh, our threading exercise. Okay, well it's measuring up to about 19.61. So it'll give us about 0.16 to come on the radius, so we'll, uh, we'll get that board out. So a 0.01 over our target size. Let's look at our warriors. Right, we'll get up set. We'll uh, we'll get set up for our threading. Alrighty, guys, we're we'll set up with the boring bar. I should say the threading bar. What I'm going to do is do a scratch cut down inside it. What I should have done is set the gearing up um, in the rear of the lathe, and then uh, before I put the nut in, was to put a bit of um, shaft in, and then do a check on the thread. Then it's going to be. A little bit awkward to get internally, but uh, everything lines up on the uh, on the levers, so we'll see how we go. Now the problem with it being a metric lathe with an imperial screw, I'm going to have to. Um, Reverse it out each time and leave it engaged. And that's on the money. Now this thread that I'm cutting isn't standard for a, uh, a one inch Acme screw. Um, I'm cutting four TPI, the standard is actually um, five TPI. So it's a, it's a little bit coarser. Than, uh, than what the standard states. All right, we've got a scratch mark on that. I'll uh, I'll get cutting. We've got to go roughly 2.6 mil in depth, um, and I'll, I'll add a little bit of clearance onto that as well, and then we'll uh, we'll start trying things out. Now I slowed the cut right down, I noticed that the toolbar was deflecting away when I was running at a high speed, so I slowed the, the, um, the RPM down quite a bit and now it seems to be uh, cutting a lot better. Let's give it a first time go, eh? Oh yeah, it's starting. It's very tight. Alright, why don't we keep going with that? And so we get him fitting up. 
I'll bring you back when we're uh, when we're there with it. Oh, it's a bit tight now. I think we'll do another side cut on that. It's still just a little bit firm. You can see all the witness marks down there where it's actually rubbing. You may have picked them up, but I can see the little spots where it's rubbing here and there. So, yep, I reckon another side cut on that. This is the main working area. You can see it's listening off a little bit, but for what we're going to do, right, I'm going to leave it at that. It does bind up at a point, which is just here. I don't know why, whether the root diameter changes, the mono diameter, or the OD changes, but it's binding up. But with the jaws fully closed, I've got around about 10 mil before I enter into the nut. So there's really no point in me taking that any further. A little bit of slackness in there, and you probably want that with this because it's uh, the alignment isn't going to be absolutely perfect on it. So that's that point there where it just binds up, as I said. Just there, from there back, it's it's lovely. So I'm going to leave it at that. It's not going to affect the operation anyway. In fact, I'll even take it out of gear. So next thing I'll need to do is I've got to knock that arrows on the back of this, and I've got to put a chamfer on that radius. So we'll get set up and do those next. And that's our, uh, that's our nut finished. Alright guys, we'll catch you soon. Okay, I'm just going to do a, uh, a trial fit over the nut. And uh, we'll see if it's going to fit. Hang on. Just have to move this jaw back a bit. Let's see if that's enough. Okay, well, it fits in there okay. That looks all right. We'll um, see if the screw is going. I'll bring you guys around here. I'm sort of not expecting this to go. Oh, no, hang on. That is. It's going in. I might not have to do any more taper cutting on it. There we go. Beautifully. I think we might leave that nut at that. I won't worry about putting those, um, doing those little tapers on the, uh, on the radiuses. All right, there's something else I want to show you guys on this vise. You can see where there's been some repair work done. I think um, after it's been cast, and uh, I'll just take you over and show you what's uh, what's going on there. You can see it here. So the buyer that built this up with um, the hydrogen rods or your tectoid rods. Um, See a fair bit of porosity there actually in their uh, in their well build up. But I'd say this is factory. Uh, obviously when they've cast these up, sand is broken away. When they've cast it or washed out, 
and uh, lift this as a bit of a cavity and this may be a standard repair procedure they uh, they follow for uh, for uh, getting those back to uh, back to spec something else I need to look at too on the front of those and you can see the massive amount of wear that's going on in there too so I'm thinking I may build that up around that radius as well and then uh, machine that back to spec and try and get that um, back to where it should be but obviously years and years and years of work has, uh, has paid its toll on this old girl so we'll uh, we'll have a look at what we can do there when we're we're, uh, we're well repairing all of these uh, score marks right through him and try and get him looking back a little bit better than what he was looks like an old pit bull that's been in a few blues all right guys well look i'm really happy with that screw that's uh that has fitted up like a dream all right guys so i think uh probably the next thing we'll move on to will be the uh the jaws and i've had a bit of a look at these as well these haven't come up too bad after uh, after the sandblasting so they beveled out a bit here i may still give those a bit of a lick in the milling machine just to just to square everything up a little bit but uh yeah yeah we're coming along nicely all right guys we'll see you in a tick all right guys just before i sign off uh i'd like to show you something my uh, my youngest boy daniel made up for me while I was over at a couple of mates uh, catching up for Christmas and uh, yes he's uh, he's made me a Christmas tree for the workshop <laughs> he's using a step ladder to do it with and he's put a picture of himself underneath the star isn't that gorgeous <laughs> all right guys um, that's it for the year um, it's been a, a fairly trying year for myself particularly with uh, my cancer diagnosis and uh, and the subsequent surgery, but uh, it's coming together, which is great. I certainly wish uh, all you guys a, a a very happy and prosperous new year, and uh, we'll see you back here again in the in the Battler workshop, uh, ready to do it all again. All right, thanks again, guys, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.